Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft Power Toys for Windows 95. Now, this is a pretty cool collection of software that was released by Microsoft in 1995 as a part of the uh, Power Toys line of software. Now, the Power Toys line of software, there were versions for Windows 95, XP, and even Windows 10. There is a version of this software for Windows 10. Uh, but today's video is going to focus on the initial version, the very first version released for Windows 95. Now, this was a free set of software. This was offered completely free by Microsoft, but it was not officially supported by them. This was kind of a set of software developed by Microsoft developers, but it wasn't actually officially supported by the company. So you could not, you know, call up Microsoft to uh, get support for this, which is one of the reasons why they just gave it away for free. And users are also advised if we open up the uh, README file, here uh, it will very very clearly say if we scroll down here a little bit uh, it'll say these enhancements were developed by members of the Microsoft Windows 95 team and now being made available to all Windows 95 users at no cost these are not part of any shipping retail product at this point in time and therefore are not supported through any official channels use at your own risk see official disclaimer below so you were advised to use this at your own risk this was kind of as is software and Microsoft was not going to provide any support for it so it was really only intended for those power users who really knew what they were doing and, and kind of wanted to you know know tweak and customize their Windows 95 installation and that's exactly what this package was designed to do now most of the power toys are not new applications but rather enhancements to existing Windows applications think of them as tweaks that's really the best way to describe them now inside of this readme document uh, the Microsoft developers give you a very uh, detailed list of all of the different tweaks in here what they actually do and they also tell you how to install it this is not installed in the most traditional sense like you would think of installing a program through a setup executable file you have to actually install it using these inf files now uh, there were individual inf files for each of these uh, different tweaks and you could go to each one and just right click on and click on install but they have provided this nice install.inf file right here which you can right click on and click on install and yeah that little error that we got there there's actually a bit of a interesting effect that happens where it tries to search for the clock.exe file uh, and for whatever reason, it, it like can't find it, even though it's in this folder. So you have to kind of manually type in clock.exe and uh, then it will copy that file over. So yes, this is a new version of the clock file. We will get into that. And right now it is installing Tweak UI, which might sound familiar to those of you guys who saw my Tweak UI video, uh, which in that video, I showcased the version of Tweak UI for Windows XP, but it actually got its start here uh, in Microsoft Power Toys for Windows 95. This was the very first version of Tweak UI. And then it comes up with this uh, documentation for the Send To extensions, which we will get into in a moment. So we're gonna close out of that. And it does the same thing with the Find extension. So we will close out of that as well. So now it's actually installed everything. It's gotten all these tweaks installed on the system. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at uh, what Microsoft Power Toys for Windows 95 had to offer. So we're gonna start off with any folder. Now, what any folder does is it adds a new option to the right-click context menu under Send To. And what this allows you to do is send whatever file that you're right-clicking on to any folder. So if I wanted to send this file to another folder, rather than having to open up a separate Explorer window and browse to the folder that I wanted to and just you know copy and paste it or cut and paste it, I can just go to Send To, click on any folder, and then it will come up with this other folder dialog box. I can type in whatever folder that I want or just click on Browse. So let's say I want to send this to the desktop. I can click OK. And now it will send a copy of this file to the desktop. So yes, a lot of these tweaks, I mean, as I said, they are tweaks. These are not going to be like new programs. So a lot of these things are kind of little modifications to uh, different applications and even Windows like system menus, like the right click context menu where it adds new uh, features to it. And there are a lot of these tweaks that do just that. They add new things to the right click context menu. The next one we're gonna take a look at is called cab view. And what this one does is it allows you to uh, view the contents of a cab file just like a regular folder. Now, cab files, if you're not aware, are essentially compressed archives that are used by Windows to contain usually drivers and other system files. But because these files are essentially archives, they can be opened with software like WinRAR or 7-Zip. But Microsoft actually introduced their own tool called CabView, which does uh, just that. And you can see it actually changes the icon of the cab files to a uh, folder looking icon. This right here is what the standard icon looks like. 
But what I can do is I can just double click on this and it'll open up this CAB file just like any other folder. And I can then extract all these files from it. Let's say I want to make a copy of this win87em.dll. I can copy that. I can paste it to the desktop and there's a copy of it right there. The next one to take a look at is clock. Now, you guys probably know that Windows 95 did come with a clock program. So what's so special about this? Well, if we run it here, What's really special about this is uh, how the clock works when you change it to analog. And if I double click here, you'll see that the clock will actually change to this round borderless clock, which actually looks like a regular, you know, wall clock, like something you would have on your wall. So it just kind of gives it a whole new look. And it's pretty cool. You can just set it on the uh, desktop here. It looks a lot sleeker. It kind of fits in a lot better than having this like, you know, window opened up with this border on it. Uh, kind of looks pretty cool. So let's actually leave it there for the rest of the video. So that is what the clock application looks like now. Now, one of the other cool modifications is called a uh, contents menu. And what this does is it basically lets you view the contents of a folder without having to go into the folder. So I've got this Doom folder here, and let's say I wanted to view the contents of it without having to actually open up the folder. Well, what I can do is right click on it. This is another one of those tweaks that makes a modification to the context menu. And you can see there's this new contents option here, and I can mouse over this and it will uh, show me all of the contents inside of that folder. I can even launch applications from it. It also works on folders with a lot of contents in them, like for example, the Windows folder, and it will literally just uh, take over the entire uh, context menu so you can see that we've got like almost the entire screen here taken up by all the contents of the Windows folder. So yes, it does even work for you know folders with a lot of contents in them. Another tweak is called Explore from here and this adds another option to the context menu. And what this does is if I right click on this folder and click on Explore from here, It'll open up a new Explorer window uh, with all of the contents of the Doom folder. But what makes this a little bit different than the like regular Explorer window is it actually treats whatever folder that you right click on as the root directory. So you see that Doom here is the top level directory, even though there is a folder above it. Obviously, the you know C drive is the top level directory for the C drive. So it's not actually going to show that. It's only going to show what's inside of the folder that you right click on. And uh, it's basically going to treat that folder as the top level directory. And we can also do this with the Microsoft Bob folder here. Yes, I've got Microsoft Bob installed on this computer. And you can see that, yes, it will once again treat the, the MS Bob directory as the root level directory. It'll show all these subfolders here. So yes, this could be useful if you wanted to view the contents of a folder or make modifications to contents inside of a folder without really messing up any of the like directories above whatever folder that you right click on. Now, another cool tweak, this is kind of more of a of a separate application. It's actually an executable file. It's called desk menu. And I can run this right here. And it will show this new icon in the system tray here that is now running in the background. And you can see the full name of it is desktop content. So what this does is it allows me to right click on this icon. And I can view all of the icons and folders on my desktop. So if I had like an application open, and I was you know, like I had this maximized, it's like full screen, and I'm you know, browsing files, doing whatever. And I want to quickly get to something on my desktop. Instead of having to minimize the application, I can just go down here, right click on this icon, and let's say I want to launch Opera. Well, I can just click on Opera, and it will launch Opera just like I'm launching it from my desktop. So it, it makes it uh, really you know, useful if you had a application open that you were working in that you didn't want to minimize and go to the desktop. So you're kind of seeing the theme of, of uh, these here. These are really for power users to kind of speed up certain actions on the system. The next tweak is very similar to Explore from here, and it is known as a uh, command prompt here, or as it's shown in the Windows 95 Power Toys folder, uh, DOS here. And this basically opens up a command prompt in whatever folder that you right click on. So I have right click on the Doom folder and launched the command prompt. It opens up an MS DOS prompt in the C Doom directory. So that is. Uh, you know how this tweak works again very simple but it's for those power users who just really want to you know get a command prompt open very very quickly in whatever directory that they want to our next tweak is called find x and basically what this does is it adds a couple of new options to the find menu in the start menu so not only do you have find files or folders but you've got find a computer find something on the internet which shows up here twice uh, for some reason find something in the knowledge base or find people so if i wanted to find another computer on my network i could click on on this and uh, type in a computer name which this may actually be able to pull up 
uh, my computer because it's on the, the same network, although I don't think I have sharing configured properly yet, so it's not going to find anything. But if I was on a uh, network with a bunch of other computers and I wanted to find another user's computer very, very quickly, I could just open this up and search for the computer's name and it will pull it up here. Uh, so yes, that is what uh, Find X does. Our next tweak is called Flexi CD, also known as Quick CD. And what this does, this is actually an application. So if I double click on this and run it, you'll see there's a new icon that it adds to the system tray. And what I can do from here is I can right click on this and I now have a menu that allows me to control uh, an audio CD. Say I had like a music CD inserted into this computer's disk drive. I can now control that audio CD right from this little menu. So I can have uh, the option to play it from the very beginning. I can stop it, pause it, go to the next or previous track. I can even eject it. Uh, and this option is like, I can actually click on this because there is a CD in the drive right now. It's just not an audio CD, but I can click on this and it will actually eject the CD. And you can see here, if I press F5, there's now uh, not a CD in the drive. So it, the eject option actually works for any CD. Our next tweak is called uh, Quick Res. This is kind of similar to both Desk Menu and Flexi CD because it's an application that adds a new icon to the system tray. And as you can probably guess by the name, this one allows you to quickly change your screen resolution right from this little menu. So if I wanted to quickly change my uh, you know, screen resolution to 640 by 480 or 800 by 600, I can do that right from here very, very quickly. Now, our next tweak is called uh, Send to X, and this kind of ties into a tweak that we took a look at earlier, which was uh, any folder, which allowed you to send a uh, file that you right click on to any folder on the system. So if I right click on this uh, item, right here and go to send to and you can see here that we have once again that any folder uh, option but we've also got a lot of other options in here that are not normally in here uh, I can copy the contents of this file to the clipboard I can even copy the name so if I uh, click on send to clipboard as name I can then go into like run here and paste it and we'll actually paste the uh, file path to whatever file that I have, uh, you know, chosen here. So in this case, it was flexicd.inf. So it's going to copy uh, the exact file path to that, which is very, very useful. So that is what uh, Send2x does. Our next tweak is called a uh, telephony location selector. And this once again adds an option to the system tray. And this would be very useful for if you were using a laptop with a modem and you were constantly, you know, moving around changing locations you can actually change your uh, location you know right from here so if i click on start phone dialer it'll ask you okay what country are you in what area code are you in now and uh, if you dial a number to reach an outside line what is it so this would be yeah very useful if you were using a modem to you know dial in to the internet using dial up but you were constantly you know traveling a lot say you you know traveled a lot for business and you needed to constantly change what area code uh, this allowed you to do that very very easily and it once again adds an option right to the system tray obviously this phone dialer application is not anything new this was included in windows 95 uh, but this just gives you an easier way to access it and change what area code which is again very very useful for business travelers so uh, that is the uh, telephony location selector next up we have one that i actually find really cool it's called target and what this does is it adds a target menu to the context menu for shortcuts so i've got this opera shortcut on the desktop here i can right click on this and you see there's this new target menu i can go into this and right here this is basically everything inside of this target menu with the exception of open container uh, is just like me right clicking on the application the exe file itself that this shortcut points to so i can click on open container and it will open up the folder that contains this exe file but everything else essentially acts as uh, me right clicking on this opera.exe file. So if I wanted to cut and move this opera.exe file somewhere else, I can then go to the desktop, I can click on paste, and you'll see that it will actually move the opera.exe file out of this folder. So it's essentially just like me uh, hitting control X or right clicking on this uh, icon itself and you know selecting cut. So it just gives you a very, very easy way um, to actually get to the context menu for this application without, without having to actually browse for it. So I can do the same thing with the properties menu. Say I wanted to view the properties for the opera.exe file. I can click on properties and it will open up the properties menu for opera.exe, not the shortcut. This is different. If I go to properties here, 
this is going to open up the uh, properties menu for the shortcut, which is not going to give me, you know, things like the version information. So yes, again, a very, very useful tweak for power users. Our next tweak is called X mouse, which gets its name from how it actually modifies how the mouse behaves with regard to selecting windows. Uh, it actually modifies it to behave more like the X Windows system. So if I open this uh, application right here, what it will now do is it is now running in the background. There's no icon for it or anything like that because there's no options to configure. Um, but what I can do is I can now uh, move my mouse around and you'll see that whatever window that I am mouse over will be the active window. This is exactly how the X window system behaves. Uh, so if you were a fan of this, if you did prefer how the X window system functioned in this respect, uh, you could enable this for Windows 95 through the use of this tool. Uh, for those of you who have seen my Tweak UI video, this probably sounds familiar to you because Tweak UI in Windows XP had this exact same functionality. You could enable this through uh, Tweak UI in Windows XP. Now, to disable it, you have to actually go into the control panel. It actually adds uh, a new option to the control panel. If I scroll down here, there's this new option for X mouse. I can go in here, and these are the only options for the program. So it doesn't add any configurable options to the system tray like all these other applications, but it actually adds it to the control panel. And if I wanted to remove this, the only way to get rid of it is to click on remove, and it will now actually uh, get rid of it. And to re-enable it, um, I have to actually launch this application again. You cannot go back into this uh, because if you refresh the control panel, as you can see, it actually just gets rid of it. So if you click on remove, it basically uninstalls uh, that tweak, and you have to actually double click on the X mouse uh, application again from this Power Toys folder to actually re-enable it, and it will once again add the control panel entry for you. So that is how X mouse functions. And our next and final tweak to take a look at in this video is called Tweak UI, which is again the Windows 95 version of Tweak UI. Now, if I open this up here, if you saw my uh, Windows XP Tweak UI video, uh, there were a lot, you know, more options available in that program. There were actually even some of the tweaks here in Power Toys, like X Mouse, for example, that were added to Tweak UI for Windows XP. But as I said, it was first, the Tweak UI program was first seen in Windows 95 Power Toys. There's not as many options in this version, but this is where it got its start. So I can change things uh, like the menu speed. This basically gives you the option to change uh, how fast a context menu will open up uh, when you right click on it. So th there's this test icon here. This is very similar to uh, Windows XP's version of Tweak UI. Um, but I can change this, say that I wanted the context menu to be very, very slow when it opens up. It doesn't really uh, do much. It doesn't really change much because we are running this in a VM. Uh, and I am obviously using a very, very fast processor for Windows 95. So everything opens up very quickly by default. If I was using an emulator like PCEM, uh, you would definitely see you know this taking effect. Uh, much better, but yes, if you were using this on like a Windows 95 system or in, in an emulator as opposed to a virtual machine software, you would see changes, uh, you know, take effect with this menu speed uh, slider here. You also have the option to change mouse sensitivity for double clicking and dragging. Uh, and once again, you have uh, the option to test that out on the test icon here. This is very similar. I think uh, Tweak UI for XP had this same option. Uh, under general here, you can change certain effects. You can even change the location of special folders. So say you wanted uh, my documents to point to a different folder than C colon slash my documents. You can change that right here. You can also change the default search engine. There's a bunch of different search engines you can choose here. Uh, you can see Google is not an option because this application actually predates uh, Google because, you know, in 1995, Google did not exist. Uh, so you can actually change uh, whatever search engine that um, Internet Explorer will, you know, search with when you click or when you type in a question mark followed by whatever keyword you want to search for. We also have the ability under the Explorer menu to actually change uh, the shortcut overlay, which is basically the little icon that will display over a shortcut so we can change it from the arrow to maybe a light arrow. You can have nothing showing or you can make it your own custom uh, icon. So if you had a custom icon that you want to use or if you want to use like a default Windows icon like the registry editor icon, for example, uh, you can do that. Now all of these uh, shortcuts will have the uh, regedit icon over the icon for you know whatever program it is. 
You also have the ability to, on startup, uh, choose to display the little animated click here to begin, which will be that little arrow that will kind of bounce um, on the uh, start button, so you can choose to enable that or not. You can choose to enable the uh, tip of the day. One that I actually find useful is you can disable the shortcut to prefix on a shortcut, which is when you like make a shortcut and the default name of it will be shortcut to and whatever that the uh, program is, you can actually get rid of that prefix. Uh, you know, if you wanted to. And you also have the ability to save uh, window settings for, I mean, this is again, going to modify things for uh, Explorer. So definitely very useful. Under desktop, you have the ability to enable or disable certain desktop icons. So say I didn't want the recycle bin to show on the desktop. I can disable that and hit apply. And if I refresh the desktop, you'll see that the recycle bin icon is now gone. So you can choose to enable or disable a lot of the uh, Windows system icons on the desktop. Under my computer, we can choose to enable or disable certain drives. Uh, a, a lot of this stuff we saw in the XP version of uh, Tweak UI as well. I believe the XP version of Tweak UI had this uh, functionality as well. So this would be useful, uh, say, for your children's computer that you didn't want, you know, your child accidentally going into the C drive and deleting files, you can make it more difficult for them to do that by disabling the C drive in uh, my computer. So now there will be no uh, C drive here. You can obviously still access it manually. Um, so it's not going to like disable that, but it's going to make it more difficult uh, to access because it's not going to show up in my computer. So definitely very useful, um, kind of like for a you know parental controls purpose, which I I can definitely see this being useful in that sense. Under network, you actually have the ability to log on automatically at system startup if you type in a username and password here. Definitely very useful. Under new, this is going to modify the options in your right click new uh, context menu. So you've got uh, these options that display by default. You can disable some of them. So say you didn't want any of these to display, you can go through here and uncheck all of them. And uh, I can apply this. And now if I go to new, you see there's only folder and shortcut. None of these uh, options are enabled. So that's useful. If maybe you never used new wave sound, you can disable that in case you accidentally, you know, click on it a lot, or maybe you just didn't want it in there just to save space, whatever that it might be, uh, you can, you know, disable that, which is definitely useful. You also have a tab for add and remove programs, which there is already an option for this in the control panel. So you might ask what's different about this. Well, with this, what you can actually do first of all is add a new um, uninstall entry. So say you had a program that didn't automatically add itself to add or remove programs, you can actually manually add an entry and just under command here, you can point to uh, the uninstall.exe file or whatever that it might be. So you can actually manually add entries. You can also rename entries, which is something you cannot do from the standard um, add and remove program. So say for Flexi CD, if I wanted to get rid of this remove only text, I can right click on it and click on rename and it will allow me to rename it. So let's say I just want to call it Flexi CD. I can hit apply. And now if I refresh this window, which I have to actually close out of it and open it back up, uh, Flexi CD will now only say Flexi CD as opposed to Flexi CD remove only. So yeah, again, another pretty useful option for power users. Under the boot tab here, here you've got some pretty useful options obviously pertaining to what happens uh, when the system boots up. So I can choose to have the function keys available for longer than two seconds, you know, on boot up. I can choose to start the GUI automatically on login. I can choose to disable the splash screen. I can choose to disable um, the ability to press F4 to boot into the previous operating system. I can also uh, completely disable scan disk. If I never want scan disk to run, I can choose never, or I could have it run uh, without prompting, which would run it, you know, on boot up every single time. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you can also choose to always show the boot menu on boot up and you can also uh, change the timeout option. Say you didn't want it to be 30 seconds, you can uh, increase it or decrease it. And you can also hit restore factory settings if you accidentally mess up something in here that you do not want uh, to be changed. You can just click on restore factory settings and it will uh, reset it back to factory settings, which is useful. Uh, you've also got under the repair tab here, a lot of options to, uh, for example, rebuild the icons. You can repair system files, repair file associations, which is very useful. And if you right click on any of these buttons and go to what's this, it will actually tell you exactly what it does. So for rebuild icons, it says the rebuild icons button rebuilds all Explorer icons and removes unused Explorer icons from memory. Use this button when you find that Explorer is displaying the wrong icon for a program or shortcut. So it makes it very, very easy. Just with one click, you can repair 
uh, or rather rebuild icons. You can re repair file associations, which is very useful. You can even repair regedit. And it, once again, if you right click on that, it'll, it'll tell you exactly uh, what it does. You've also got this interesting tab here called paranoia. And the first uh, section here is called covering your tracks. And what you can do is uh, have the like when you log into the system, you can automatically have it clear things like your run history, your document history, you can clear the last user clear IEs history. So very useful. Um, if you wanted to do this stuff, the option is here for you, whatever purpose you're going to use that for. Uh, and you can also clear all these options now uh, if you actually have anything selected. So if I wanted to clear IE's uh, history, I can uh, select that, hit clear now, and now uh, the Internet Explorer browsing history will be deleted. You can also choose uh, to disable auto run for audio and data CDs, and you can also log any illegal operations, which are those like error messages that'll come up and saying, you know, whatever program performed an illegal operation will be shut down. You can actually log those errors to a file called faultlog.txt. So again, very useful for those power users out there. So that is basically it, guys. That is an in-depth look at all of the uh, features offered in Microsoft Power Toys for Windows 95. Again, the very first version of Power Toys. Uh, if you guys want me to take a look at some of the future versions of this, for there is again a version for Windows XP and even Windows 10. There is a current version of this program for Windows 10. If you guys want to see either of those videos, be sure to let me know. If you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below. Turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do every single week, multiple times per week actually on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and for your continued support here on the channel. And I will see you all in the next video.